enferma. Just how powerful is nostalgia? Powerful enough to bring even the dead back to life. In 65 years of video game development, a handful of games have managed to permanently stamp their names on the hearts of their players. But these game creators usually have a hard time replicating this effect. Developers like Mojang with Minecraft. Then there are studios who time and time again leave the world in awe at the games they create. So much so that decades could pass after playing one of these games and all you'd have to hear is the first two seconds of its theme song or even catch a glimpse of the game's old graphics to be sent all the way back to when you were first introduced to the game. EA, Ubisoft, Sony, and Sega are a few that are exceptional at this, but none so much as Nintendo. It is not only the oldest video game studio in existence, but has produced top-selling franchises like Pokemon, Mario, Wii, and many more. But how did this pioneer of digital amusement become so globally recognized and nostalgically significant? To answer this question, we'll need to go back to when Nintendo was first created and walk through how their standout games like Pokemon and Super Mario Bros. were developed. Most believe the story of Nintendo began in 1889, but the studio might never have existed had it not been for events that took place over two centuries earlier. The early 1600s still fell under the Spanish Golden Age, in which Spain and Spanish culture was the dominant force in Europe and therefore around the world. But Japan was a special case. Japan lacked those natural resources that would have made it a prime target for the Spaniards. Geographically speaking, it was also a very difficult nation to conquer. This combination of factors allowed Japan to grow in isolation and forego any Spanish influence that might have been imposed on them. So when Japan closed its borders in 1633, the playing cards aspect of Spanish influence was essentially banned. This brings us to 1889 where a Japanese man named Fusajiro Yamauchi decided to solve this cultural problem and develop his own playing cards. These were known as Nafudu cards, a traditional set of Japanese playing cards, smaller and thicker than the typical Western style. These cards were stylish and decorated with icons, images, and patterns, and were mostly used for strategy-based games. The company's early years were focused on the production and distribution of these Hanafuda cards. The only problem was that Yamauchi's dedication to high quality meant a lack of streamlined production, as he had a team of artists hand-painting each deck of cards. But he knew that if he continued down this road, the company would never gain real success, so he began mass production of lower quality cards. Soon after, his company began to take off, and was established as Yamauchi Nintendo & Co. in 1933, before it was renamed as Nintendo Playing Card Co. Limited in 1951. During those couple of decades, the company continued to grow and expand, and it was even handed its first global expansion opportunity by Walt Disney. In 1959, Walt Disney asked Nintendo to create an exclusive set of playing cards with a Disney theme. And while this was a great opportunity for increased exposure overseas, Nintendo began experiencing decreased sales. Something about their strategy wasn't working, and they'd need to innovate once again to keep the company alive. So, after almost 80 years in card manufacturing, they transitioned into toys and board games. But even this focus venture was to be short-lived. About a decade earlier, the physicist William Higginbotham developed what is often thought to be the very first video game in Bridgeport, Connecticut. A very simple game with moving graphics on an oscilloscope. This sparked the widespread adoption of video games and its expansion outside the US. Then came the arcades. The video game arcade was first invented in 1971, and by 1980, over 86% of Americans had played them. The arcade industry has enjoyed massive success since its conception and has found a way to endure to this day. In light of this, Nintendo created their own way to enjoy this new amusement with a new image projection system, which they distributed to America and Europe. But simply adding to others' inventions wasn't enough. So in 1975, Nintendo released its first video game console, the Color TV game. It was a series of dedicated consoles with the capacity to run a variety of simple games. These weren't particularly successful, but gave Nintendo an introduction to the video game industry. 1983 proved to be one of the most significant dates in Nintendo's history. Finally tonight, the latest video game craze to sweep the United States and Japan. It's called Nintendo. It was in this year that they released the Nintendo Entertainment System. After this release, there was no question of Nintendo's significance in the industry, as they sold over 60 million units worldwide and introduced the world to some of the most iconic games of all time. Starting with games like Donkey Kong and Duck Hunt, but more importantly, Super Mario Bros. and The Legend of Zelda. These early games skyrocketed Nintendo to such meteoric success that they even began facing accusations of monopolistic practices. 
In response, Nintendo implemented strict licensing practices for third-party developers, which led to the creation of higher-quality games and helped to establish the NES as the dominant console of its time. Then, in 1989, Nintendo released the Game Boy. Go with the power of the NES, right in the palm of your hand. A handheld gaming device that allowed players to play games on the go. Portable gaming devices had already been around for about 13 years, but the Game Boy was so ahead of its time that it entirely redefined the handheld console category. This massive success went on to sell over 118 million units worldwide and is even regarded as one of the greatest handheld consoles of all time to this day. In the late 1980s, Nintendo continued to dominate the gaming industry with the release of the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. The SENS was a major improvement on the already loved NES, featuring improved graphics and sound, as well as a wider selection of games. The SENS was also the first console to introduce the concept of role-playing games to a wider audience. In 1996, Nintendo released the Nintendo 64, which was one of the first consoles to feature 3D graphics. It's gonna be this holiday season. It's the new Nintendo 64. This again changed the video game landscape, introducing the concept of analog sticks, which allowed for more precise movement in games. The Nintendo 64 was home to some of the most iconic games of all time, such as The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time and Super Mario 64. Advancements like this allowed Nintendo to stay ahead of the curve as the gaming industry evolved. Remember how at the beginning of this video, I said Nintendo has time and time again created highly nostalgic games? Well, we've already covered games like Duck Hunt and the Donkey Kong, Mario, and Legend of Zelda franchises and now you can add Tetris and Kirby to that list. But even this was nothing compared to what was to come. A couple of months before the release of the Nintendo 64, Nintendo would reveal two games that would alter the course of its future. Many of their games before these were continuations of already successful franchises, but this was an entirely new one. Pokemon Red and Pokemon Green. It took a couple of years to reach North America, but when it did, sales skyrocketed. The world got its first introduction to the realm of Pokemon, and this spelled the beginning of a line of highly successful games that would eventually distinguish Pokemon as the number one highest earning video game franchise of all time. In fact, of the top five highest earning video game franchises, Nintendo has made three, Pokemon, Mario, and the Wii. The release of Pokemon Red and Green was a pivotal moment in Nintendo's history, but was by no means the peak. In 2006, Nintendo released the Wii, which introduced motion-controlled gaming. The Wii was a massive success, selling over 100 million units worldwide. The Wii's innovative gameplay and wide range of games appealing to non-gamers led to a huge increase in the number of casual players. And during this decade, Nintendo went on to release 52 additional games within the Pokemon franchise. And along with all these new games came a host of new consoles. Let's see how this works. Konnichiwa. <laughs> Yeah. With 2011 being the year Nintendo released the Nintendo 3DS. Six years later, Nintendo released the Switch, a hybrid console that could be played both as a stationary home device and as a portable one. It was an instant success, selling over 79 million units worldwide by 2020. Games in general are uniquely powerful in their ability to inspire feelings of nostalgia. The toys you grew up with or the board games you used to play with your family are crucial parts of people's memories. Everything in life could be going wrong and all it would take is one reminder of these sentimental items or moments from the past to bring a smile to your face. This is especially true for video games. But what is it about this loading screen that can launch grown men into week or month long campaigns to try and beat the game? Whenever I personally think of nostalgic games that shaped my childhood, I immediately think of Minecraft. There's almost no comparison to that first time you logged into the sandbox, the first tree you chopped down, the first dirt house you built, or the first time you were blown up by a creeper. The moment you realized you could do anything or be anything in this new world. With its original fan base and sustained success in the video game space, it's no surprise that Minecraft is the number one selling game of all time. It's a feat many have aspired towards and fallen short of. And yet, Nintendo has managed to create four special franchises with this exact effect. The first and most powerful reason these games are so nostalgic is the context in which the games were played. For many, Pokemon isn't just some pixels on a screen. It's a reminder of simpler, more carefree times. 
For some, it symbolized community, as they gathered with their friends on a regular basis to play the game, trade Pokemon cards, or talk about their latest catches. This has even led many people to reach back out to their old gaming partners and re-establish or rebuild those connections. For others, it was an escape. They could enter into a world far from the reality of homework or home life and focus on one mission, catch them all. It can often feel like time is just slipping through our fingers. These games bring you back to a time when everything was slow, everything was calm. If not on the outside, then at least while you're playing the game. Another reason these games are still so impactful today is because of their music. A skillfully chosen soundtrack has a special ability to make a game iconic. But why is that? Well, there are psychological reasons for this. The human brain is wired to remember music more easily than any other type of information because music is processed in multiple areas of the brain, including the auditory cortex and the hippocampus, which is responsible for memory consolidation. It's also been found that music activates both the left and right hemispheres of the brain, which can enhance memory recall. You don't even have to hear the music outright. All you'd have to do is think about it, and the multiple regions of the brain involved in memory and emotion would be activated. All of this plays into the nostalgic power of music, and explains why franchises like Mario and Pokemon will never be forgotten. But a warning. Nostalgia is bittersweet by nature. While yes, it stirs the memories of perhaps happier and simpler times, it is also very closely linked to sadness. However, for many, it can serve as the very solution to these feelings of sadness. Maybe things aren't going well at work or school. An hour or two enjoying the games of your past could be all it takes to bring you out of your slump. Those are some of the biggest reasons these games can induce such strong feelings of nostalgia. But one last thing I'll mention are the graphics. The games themselves are almost like mini documentation of the time in which they were created. If you were to launch Pokemon Red on your Game Boy, the first thing you notice are the thousands of pixels making up your favorite characters and events. The quality of these is a reminder of not only what used to be cutting edge and the latest technology, but also how far you've come since then. Nintendo has mastered the art of nostalgia through their repeated innovations and understanding of human psychology and as a result is the third largest video game company in the world. But despite its success and large fan base, Nintendo has not been immune to controversies and suspicious practices. In recent years, Nintendo has been criticized for its treatment of workers with reports of poor and even oppressive working conditions. Much of these accusations have been shot towards Nintendo's US branch, including several complaints over low wages in its factories. The company has also been criticized for its lack of support for independent developers. The likes of Ubisoft, Activision, and Blizzard all of which are highly successful gaming companies, have been battling allegations as well. But all in all, Nintendo has had a truly remarkable journey, from its humble beginnings as a playing card manufacturer to one of the most recognizable and profitable gaming companies in the world. Comment down below what games are most nostalgic for you.